Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. We on the top, woo, woo. 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 Had to get it with my guys, never stop, woo, woo. Mr. Going. All right. Um, today I have Mr. Ume Uzoke. Um, he is a personal trainer. Um, uh, in the industry. Um, how are you doing today, today, sir? I'm doing good. How are you doing, Landon? I'm well. I see that you're at the BET Awards. So <laughs> how, how's that experience? I've never been. Uh, it's actually a pretty cool experience. You get to see a lot of uh, people in the music industry, in the sports industry. Um, yeah, it's a pretty cool experience. It's my first okay. time going too, so I'm kind of, it's kind of exciting check it out and be here and be part of it so it's pretty cool okay uh i'm gonna go ahead and answer the uh hit you with these questions because i know you want to get back into the, <laughs> to the festivities um the first question is can you tell us uh, about your experience as a professional uh football player and what motivated you to go that route uh coming out of college um coming out of college uh i had the opportunity actually to go uh, to the New York Jets camp, which is an amazing opportunity. We went to a mini camp and training camp. And, you know, upon that, that didn't work out. So I ended up going abroad to play professionally. Um, I went to Sweden for a year because they used to be an NFL Europe. Mm -hmm. But the NFL stopped funding it, and a few bank owners bought the teams out. And then my second year, I joined the German Football League. So I moved out to Germany for my second year. But every time I would come home in the off season, I'd just, uh, you know, train as a, I'd personal train, and I'd work as a physical therapist assistant. And then I went back for two more years, so I went to Portugal for two more years. Um, but my experience playing professionally was, it was awesome. You know, getting to travel the world, do what I love, um, get the, got the opportunity to play at the highest level. Would have been great to come back and, and join the NFL team, but that didn't happen. But it was a great journey for me. Um, the next one is, um, how did your transition from being a, prof a professional uh, football player uh, to becoming a f uh, college football coach come about, and what uh, made you decide to enter the coaching field? Yeah, so after my fourth year playing professionally, I, uh, I retired, and I knew I wanted to go back and, and uh, get my master's. So I had the opportunity from my little brother played center for the Steelers. He 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 had a guy that coached with him that knew. So it was all about like knowing somebody. Mm -hmm. He had the opportunity to become a graduate assistant at the University of Nebraska. He knew I wanted to get back into school, and that was kind of my entry into getting into college football as a football coach. So I was a GA coaching the defensive backs, and. Uh, but upon that, so after I graduated, after I got my master's, I became a full-time coach. I went down to Texas to a school called Stephen F. Austin State University. Okay. I was, yeah, I was there for a year. And then I went back up to Nebraska to become the full-time my receivers coach uh, for a year. So my, that was kind of my transition into becoming a college football coach. And it was an amazing experience. Got to coach a lot of guys. I actually got a current player right now that I coach. He plays for the New York Jets. Uh, he's a rookie, so he's currently in camp. His name is Xavier Gibson. So, again, he gave me an opportunity to kind of um, pour in the guys, right, just like my coach mm -hmm. reported me. So it was just a, it was a great opportunity, um, again, before getting out of that profession in 2020. What, what, uh, before you got out, like, at the beginning when you made the transition, what were some of the difficulties that you had to, I guess, endure to, you know, ultimately reach that ultimate goal? Um, as a as a professional athlete or as a uh, football coach? as a as a uh, as a fresh professional athlete, I mean, you know, obviously transitioning into the uh, into the coaching atmosphere. Like, what were some of the difficulties that you had that you uh, dealt with uh, with that transition? Um, some of the difficult experiences, I would I would say, was uh, sacrificing a lot, um, sacrificing, you know, vacation time with family, birthdays. Um, just a lot of sacrifice when it came to spending time with family and friends. And then kind of the same thing when you, uh, when it came to like coaching at the highest level or sorry, at the college level, mm -hmm. or sacrificing uh, a lot of time, you know, you got to travel in the off season to go recruit. 
and then during the season, you know, it's a grind. There's there's no days off during the season. A lot of film time, uh, a lot of time spent with the other coaches, game planning, kind of putting together a plan for the week. Um, so I think I would say like a lot of sacrifice when it came to spending time with with family and friends. And then obviously you uh, you switch you uh, once you were done co- uh, coaching you actually went into the fitness industry. Um, what I guess uh, what shifted that focus and why did you think that that would be a better avenue for you uh, moving forward? Well, twenty twenty when everything kind of when everything shut down uh, during COVID, you know, coaching all that got shut down. I th- I, w- I went through this uh, this little identity crisis I would say and and just. A really dark spot and i know i'm being kind of open and vulnerable with it right now but uh yeah i went through a really dark spot and you know i knew i needed to make a transition but i didn't know what that looked like so i uh, actually moved out to southern california which uh which opened my eyes to the personal training and sports performance industry you know um just of my background in physical therapy and i, I was working in corporate uh, first as a corporate personal trainer and you know coaching college athletes just all of it put together was kind of like my experience from the past all came to one when I finally got out of coaching so I I, I just implemented everything that I learned into into uh, how I train my athletes or how I train general population or how I train weekend warriors uh, celebrities whoever it is that I'm training I just have a style that again I just incorporate the physical therapy aspect of it, the personal training aspect of it when it comes to strength and conditioning, and then the sports performance base of it. Um, oh, okay. so that, yeah, so everything just kind of made sense when I moved out here to Southern California and uh, got my first client, um, you know, out here, and, and the rest is uh, kind of history, you know. I'm just here where I am now. I, I know I, I know a lot of professionals, uh, 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 Trainers uh, get asked this question, but I, I'm hoping that uh, you could add a spin to it. But uh, could you describe your approach, uh, I guess, the, uh, what, what sets you apart, I guess, uh, as a fitness professional? And how do you uh, you tailor your training program to meet the individual needs of your specific or your individual clients? I'm sorry. Um, well, first things first, right? It's, it's all about relationships. Um, so I think with whatever program, that you decide you want to put together or implement into, if it's professional against professional, gender population, whatever it is, I think just build, building that relationship, right? I want to, I want to support uh, whoever I'm training and show them that I'm genuinely here, right? That I care about what you're, what you're doing, and, and I care about you as your well-being. And then um, again, whatever that program looks like for that person, then I'm able to challenge them, okay. right? which was kind of the same thing that someone did for me that was at a very, very high level. So being able to see uh, JLT, who's based out of Los Angeles, you know, he kind of implemented that with, uh, he trained Odell Beckham Jr., just a lot of Bond Miller, a lot of guys that played in the league. You know, I saw how he supported those guys and they started challenging him. So I think that's kind of big for me, you know, it's just the relationship aspect of it. And then the result aspect of it. And then just building a community, right? So if I can build a relationship and I can get them results, and then you can make it a community, which is like, I'm able to support. We can all support each other. Whoever is part of the AU performance team, um, I think it just goes a long way. And yeah, my main focus for me is definitely like the mobility aspect of it, strengthening the core, and um, yeah, and then just again, whatever that person's goal is, we just implement those two things specifically uh, into their program. And then for me, I just, for me, for myself and the clients that I've, I've had in the past, it's all, we've always got the results and we still have that relationship and uh, we built a, a very strong community, you know, no matter, again, if it was celebrity, professional athlete, weekend warrior, nurse, senior population. Okay. Okay. Um, you had the opportunity to work with uh, this year's number one pick, Bryce Young, while preparing for the 2023 uh, NFL draft. Can you share what that process was like? Um, that process was like, um, I don't know if you know, if you're familiar with the athletes first. So athletes first, we have, 
the marketer, somebody that works in marketing at Athletes First, actually personal trains in my gym with a good friend. Um, okay. Connected with, she got me connected with Bryce's actually original strength coach. And then uh, we just made that connection. We met, talked, you know, what, what Bryce, where he was at in this process. And um, yeah, we just, we just got to it. You know, we just got to, got the training and, and literally, you know, a week later he got, he gets drafted. And, um, but anyway, we just made the connection through somebody that was in the marketing aspect at, at his agency called the Athletes First. Okay. Okay. Um, can you tell us more uh, about, I, I read that you do group classes, I think, such as uh, uh, kettlebells, extreme conditioning boot camps, and group weight training. How, how do these classes benefit your participants? Uh, yeah, I, I teach a few classes at a, a gym called Moxie 3, which is where mm -hmm. I am contract out of, which is where I train again, most of my professional athletes. I, treat, I teach a few classes for, again, the population. Uh, it implements a lot of like hit, uh, strength and conditioning. And, um, you know, I got I got into that again, just kind of giving back in a way that, you know, you get to get back to the people that are around that constantly show up to the gym. You know, these people aren't jet, these people aren't professional athletes, but they're everyday workers or, you know, makeup art, whatever they're whatever industry they're in. I'm able to, you know, implement them and let them know that they can they can train at a very high high level right right it, everyone can be a high performer so i just teach those classes and and usually it ranges from like 30 people a class again about seven times a week uh again it impl implements kettlebells barbells dumbbells um yeah so that that's that's what i do sometimes throughout the week i guess uh how like to stay up to date how do you uh expand your knowledge to stay current um, with the latest athletic perform, you know, uh, fitness in with athletics and in the fitness industry development, um, are there any certificates or anything that you have to uh, stay up to date with or things of that nature? Yeah, which I think I already mentioned to you. My brat, yeah. my bachelor's in pre physical therapy, my master's was in exercise science. You know, I got um, with level one and level two certified personal training. Uh, I've went out and. Uh, uh, went to conferences with JLT. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Collective. I went down there and I just, I just go and always constantly like network with men and guys or women that are training at a very high level, that train high level professional athletes. Um, Jeremy Hill, who again, who's down there in Austin, he trains most of the guys that come out of UT. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those number one draft picks, you know, guys like that, you like to you know, listen and look up to and go and shadow and just see what they do and see how they do it. And it doesn't mean you change up what your program looks like, right? But you can always stay up to date and you can always stay up to uh, um, where the fitness industry is, in, right? Again, um, yeah, just constantly networking, uh, constantly shadowing, constantly visiting, uh, Again, guys and people that are doing that at a very, very, very high level and, and stay pretty consistent throughout the year. What uh, I guess, obviously, you know, that's your main focus. But like, are there other things that you would like to, I guess, expand upon in the industry in regards to, you know, maybe like, um, uh, you know, clothing line, things of that nature, or you know, it may not even be in the entertainment or, or sporting industry that you're you're interested in pursuing. Yeah, so we're, we're dropping a line, um, AU Performance, which is uh, gear that's similar to, again, I don't want to name drop, but right. another that's 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 based out in uh, in Portland. Um, we got something in the works coming out, um, so we're we're going to be dropping that. Um, but for me right now, you know, we're just building the athletic community, the professional athlete community over at the gym that I'm at, Cal Moxie Three. Uh, got my guy Xavier Gibson. Be fly. They fly out, come out here for a week. Okay. Professional boxers. Uh, I, I partnered with a CBT, who or CTB, who actually has three boxers: uh, Scoob, Avius, and uh, Blue Chip. Uh, Avius is the underdog who has a fight actually coming up in August. Actually, Scoob has a fight coming up next week in New York on Showtime. And then, uh, yeah, we have Blue Chip. He has a, also has a fight coming up. So, 
you know, these guys are at a, they, they, they fight at a high, high level, right? They're on Showtime. So we're just building an athletic community out here in Orange County. I mean, it's Newport. I mean, we have the beach right here, amazing location, amazing facility that we're at. Um, again, we got the, well, the gear dropping. Um, but other than that, man, you know, I just, I just want to freely give the gift that was given to me when it came to perform, being a, given an opportunity to perform at a high level. You know, being able to do that to anybody that I can surround myself around, again, if it's professional athletes, weekend warriors, whoever that is, uh, implement a program that can get them the best results for whatever they're trying to do. That, that makes sense. Well, thank you for the opportunity to, uh, to interview you. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and let you get back to, <laughs> to the festivities. But like I said, thank you for taking time out, to, uh, out of your busy day to actually uh, speak to me on this, uh, you know, for this great interview as well. Awesome. I appreciate you, man. I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, we'll definitely chat soon. Um, and whatever information you need from me, you just let me know. And we'll kind of go from there. Thank you. Westside, Westside, Westside. Yeah, they got yeah. it bumping. We on the top. Woo, woo. 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 Had to get it with my guys. Never stop. Woo, woo. Mr. Go and split the pie. Never stop. Woo, woo. We on the top. Woo, woo. We on the top. Woo, woo. We on the top.